Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. This week's episode is titled, It's a G-G-G-Ghost BSD. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and let's just go ahead and jump on into it. First off, welcome back. I know I missed a upload about two weeks ago, but I'm back on schedule, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to do a couple more videos than I normally do. Um, really working to get back on that once-a-week schedule. And now, thanks to everybody who did the survey and a lot of YouTube comments and such, I have a lot of ideas for videos, so definitely going to try to do that. Um, so definitely look for a video this time next week. So this week's video was a large request by a lot of people on the Google survey that I've done and also a couple of comments. Um, a lot of people have asked me to cover GhostBSD. Um, I really don't know too much about it, so I took a look at it, and it's a rather nifty little uh, operating system, so that's what we're going to cover this week. So the cool things about GhostBSD is it's based on FreeBSD. It really isn't anything more than FreeBSD with a desk, with an easy-to-use desktop environment on top of it. Uh, TrueOS has a lot of management things, and it's becoming a much more, you know, almost its own beast. It's always going to be free FreeBSD, and it's starting to look kind of like the Fedora to RHEL TrueOS to FreeBSD uh, setup, but... Uh, Ghost BSD is literally just BSD and a desktop environment, and that's it. Um, one of the main reasons behind Ghost BSD is a lot of uh, people, apparently, when they go into Linux land or when they when they start making the shift, being dumped directly into a command line prompt uh, installer can be intimidating for some, especially if you have to like you know if you want to install free BSD and then you want to add you know. Uh, a library or X or something, you have to install all of that, and you have to configure all that, and that, that can be kind of uh, intimidating for new to uh, Nix land users. So the whole purpose of GhostBSD, and I guess uh, TrueOS, what old PCBSD is as well, was to offer a, a GUI-based installation, so that way people weren't so scared of it, that way it didn't, you know, it just didn't look weird. So, GhostBSD comes in a variety of different ISOs. It's, uh, you have 32 and 64-bit, and you have mate, mate, or mat, or however you say that word, M-A-T-E, and XFCE options. So, these are actually different ISOs. It's not like one ISO where you select one and it installs. You actually have a 32-bit mate, a 32-bit uh, XFCE, a 64-bit mate, and a 64 XFCE. So, what I've seen from it also is that um, on their website, it claims to be a stable version of BSD, and in, in reality, what that is, is they're actually running on top of a version of a previous version of BSD, uh, FreeBSD. So, uh, whenever uh, GhostBSD 10.3 was released, it was released in August of this past year, uh, almost a month before, I would say, FreeBSD 11 came out. So, they really are running kind of behind the FreeBSD roadmap. Um, which I guess, you know, it has its advantages and its disadvantages. Its disadvantages are, uh, you know, you, you don't get all the latest packages. You don't get all the cool new things. Now, for minor versions, eh, not necessarily a big deal. The jump from 10.3 to 11, though, uh, there was some really cool stuff that went into that. So they are kind of missing out on that. Um, I don't know if you could upgrade it directly. I, I mean, it is FreeBSD at the base. And in their documentation, like the first thing in their documentation is a link to the FreeBSD handbook. So... I wonder, and I might try that for a separate video, um, if you could install it and then upgrade it into FreeBSD 11 and be fine with it. But its main purpose exists as a great out-of-the-box beginner step into BSD. It is always a graphical install. It doesn't really have server settings, which is kind of, again, you know, it's one of the, the BSD myths. There's a big FreeBSD myth, or BSD myth in general, that FreeBSD and the other BSDs are server only environments that they're not meant for a desktop and the the true os community and the ghost bsd community have done a really good job at trying to break this myth it is one that continues to linger um but this is one where they almost kind of go the opposite it's actually it's not hard to use ghost bsd as a server but it does install with a gui so you would have to uh you'd have to account for that you know probably just turn off the gui or uninstall the gui and run it and then at that point you're running a base 10.3 system so you might as well have just installed the 10.3. So the whole point is GhostBSD is not a server operating system. It was never designed to be a server operating system. And I don't think that it, 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 it should, if you're going to use it, you might as well just use FreeBSD. So it is 100% meant for desktop. So there was going to be a demo right here, but it turns out that my laptop just can't handle it. 
Um, VirtualBox was not agreeing with GhostBSD whatsoever. I have a sneaky suspicion this is hardware restrictions. Again, I'm doing this on a MacBook Pro with not the best. It's a it's the medium level processor. Uh, you know, it's the one that only adds like you know ten billion dollars to the price with all Mac products. Um, so I was unable to get a video of this of of a setup. So basically, what this this is good and bad. Two things, really. It's it's bad because this video is now kind of boring. You don't really get to see it. Um, if you are interested, I recommend going over to the ghostbsd.org website. They have a video, uh, you know, explaining it all. And there's a couple of interesting uh, ghostbsd tutorials that I'll post in the comment section down below. So that's the bad part. You don't get to see it today. The good part is you're going to be getting a beehive video really fucking soon because I'm so damn tired of not having proper hardware to do this and I have a behemoth server behind me on the ground that I'm like, you know, that's eventually going to be a beehive server and we're going to go over FreeBSD virtualization and you know what? That's what it's going to be now because I'm fed up with these damn tutorials not working the way they need to. So I'm going to put that thing together. If it's not next week's video, it's going to be the week after next. Um, but yeah, that's now my goal because it sufficiently has pissed me off enough to where now I'm going to build it. So that being said, let's go ahead and go over... You know, just a little bit of like, not pros and cons, but you know, similarities and differences between TrueOS and GhostBSD. They both aim to be a desktop BSD uh, distribution. Uh, one is a little bit more true than the other. I would say GhostBSD is probably more true to uh, FreeBSD than TrueOS is. I'm not saying that TrueOS isn't true. Ha ha ha. Um, funny puns. Uh, basically, TrueOS is adding in things like the SysADM thing and a whole bunch of other stuff for managing and creating uh, TrueOS servers. It's got things that can be a little bit farther forward in the in the uh, FreeBSD you know tree. Some other packages that go in there that are eventually going to be ported over there. So it has some stuff that makes it not 100% you know FreeBSD. GhostBSD is pretty much FreeBSD with a desktop environment on top of it. So that's good. So when would you want to use TrueOS? Um, if you want to be more current, if you're doing a lot of active development and you need the latest source, then TrueOS does it. TrueOS does a lot of uh, incremental builds. They build uh, very regularly and you can upgrade really easily with it. That's good. The, uh, the Ghost BSD is kind of like it's a release and it's done. And it doesn't really get a lot of updates to the packages and stuff. It probably is getting its ports tree updated, but the OS itself isn't getting updated. Um, there's a lot of active development going on in the TrueOS world, so if you're interested in that, um, you are getting the latest and greatest from FreeBSD. And, you know, the, like I said earlier in the video, TrueOS is really trying to be that, like, bleeding edge, you know, f I, the, the only analogy I can ever come up with is the Fedora to Rel. You know, Fedora has all these things way ahead, Rel and CentOS sit back and they kind of wait. You know, eventually the good stuff comes in, bad stuff goes away, and that's really what TrueOS is trying to be. Um, but if you want to try GhostBSD as a, you know, just as a user or as a newbie to BSD, you know, I, I have a lot of people that come to this channel that actually are, you know, new newbies to BSD and they want to get, and they want to have an operating system that they can install and not really have to worry about. Well, the fact that this has a really good live mode and doesn't require an installation allows them to be able to sample it and try it before they even install it very much like Fedora would do. So that's good. It has, GhostBSD has open source desktop environments. Now, PCBSD did for a while. Um, now they've really moved on to Lumina, which is their new, uh, it's basically their new uh, desktop environment built specifically for TrueOS. I don't know if anybody else, like if Linux has tried to port it yet. I, I don't know much about the Lumina project, except that that's what it's built for, and that's nice. But, you know, maybe some people don't like Lumina. Um, I haven't really had that much time to play with it. But it really wasn't my favorite a little bit. I, I'm, I'm personally a GNOME fan. Uh, so, you know, eh. Um, so you would... So this is easy to install. Older, you know, the, the more tried and true Mate and XFCE. Very popular, very common desktop environments. Um, and even before TrueOS migrated to, P to uh, Lumina... When I used to try to install these on PCBSD, I, I never had the best of luck with them ever working out of box. So if the GhostBSD ones do work out of box, um, which I'm pretty sure they do, I couldn't demonstrate that today, but yeah. Uh, so then you have that. It's, it's, it's easy for beginners. 
it could be a server, but like I said earlier, it's really not meant to be. So it's a it's a good, you know, let's get my feet wet in BSD without having to jump headfirst into, you know, a command line only environment. The only other things I would say is um this project, while looking at it on GitHub, is relatively impressive. It, it doesn't get the updates and as much as I would like it to, but then I looked on GitHub and it has like two to four active developers. There's one guy in the project and then there's like two, maybe three really active contributors um, that work on this project. So you don't, the fact that they've gotten this far and the fact that it's still going and they're still managing to put out this fork is, is really nice. Uh, if you look at their GitHub repository, they used to contribute back to PCBSD uh, back before it became TrueOS. I don't really know what happened there. I don't really know the history of all of that. I don't know if they were contributing back because they were the ones that were working on the uh, on the desktop environments, which I'm pretty sure is what what it was. Uh, or if because because Chris Moore, the the main guy in TrueOS, or one of the main guys in TrueOS. Uh, contributed to this section of the project and merged it back in. So I'm pretty sure that the go the reason we back we used to have uh, XFCE and Mate in True and PCBSD was because of this project. And now that TrueOS has kind of moved away from it, they don't it doesn't really get the attention that it used to. So if you want, give 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 money to them. Like they're it's a it's a small community. It's it, they need con they need contributions if. The amount of people that asked me for this topic alone was rather was rather surprising. Um, I had never personally looked at it myself, but you know, if if all of y'all that sent me messages are interested in it, then then try to be active. You know, give them a couple of dollars a month. Uh, do some development if you can. It, like, I think I read on their GitHub, it's mostly like Python ish stuff. This is too cool of a project for it to not have a bigger following. I I I, I like it. Um, and you know, if more developers got on it, maybe it could be a more current version. It could be running on 11.0 instead of 10.3. Um, I'm curious when this will make it to 11.0 if it does. So I think it's a really interesting project. Thank you for everybody who recommended it because I never looked at it. I've heard about it, but I just, I never got around to looking into it. So there's that. Well, thank you very much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoy this video. A uh, quick announcement. Um, I will be attending PyCon this May in Portland, Oregon. For anybody that's there, you know, feel free to hit me up and, you know, we can meet and chat about BSD things or Python. Um, I'm also trying to attend this year's BSD can. Uh, still ironing out the details on that. And if I end up making it, I'll announce it here. And if so, I hope to see a lot of y'all there. If you like this video, go ahead and please leave it a like if you... Uh, if you have you know if you haven't already subscribed to this video send it to your friends have them subscribe too there has been an interesting amount of growth uh, on the channel lately especially for me missing a, a, an episode which has been pretty nice uh, probably because Mongo heard about the video I did last time and they tweeted it and that that went that went you know farther so that's pretty nice thank you to the Mongo people for uh, you know thinking I'm a complete idiot and just laughing at me as I read that story with blue backlight and the troll picture on my screen. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.